Hi, this is Dan Fisher. In this video, I'll be fishing for blackfish over a rock pile in about 10 feet of water. I'll be using Asian crabs for bait. On this day, I was lucky to have excellent water clarity and a very good blackfish bite with more keepers caught than shorts. A few fish went between 5 and 7 pounds. Normally in this type of location, I'd be using a spinning outfit and blackfish jigs. But for the purpose of recording video, I'm using a conventional outfit and a standard bait rig. This is a very interesting structure. It's surrounded by clean sand with no other rocks anywhere near it. And once in a while you can make out what looks like wood on the bottom. It leads me to believe this might have been a shipment of rocks meant for a jetty and it was lost overboard. I really don't know. But in any case, it's a real magnet for all kinds of fish. The larger blackfish you're going to see in this video tend to be between 16 and 18 inches. In the last few seconds of the video, you're going to see a very large blackfish, maybe 6 to 8 pounds, grab the bait and dive under a rock. As you'll see, I didn't have a chance of landing that fish. Occasionally you'll see me use a jigging motion. This has nothing to do with attracting fish. I'm just trying to find a hole or a crevice or the edge of the structure. That's where I usually find the larger blackfish. And there's an oyster toadfish saying hi. Blackfish move around more than a lot of people realize. Just a few days before I filmed this, there was hardly anything in this spot. Now there are fish all over it. Also, the stomach contents of the fish I catch from this spot usually contain black mussels and calico crabs. This leads me to believe that the blackfish feed elsewhere, but come back to this place to rest. That doesn't mean they won't scarf down a crab if you put it right in front of them. Often I'll use whole Asian crabs for blackfish, but on this day they definitely preferred cut crabs. But look what happens to that cut crab. The burgals and the small blackfish just pretty much clean out all the guts in a few seconds. I was changing my bait frequently on this day. I really didn't leave it on the bottom more than three minutes or so before changing it. That is if it lasted that long. Having the camera on the end of the line really deadens the sensation of what's going on. Even so, I can feel the pecks from all those little burgals and blackfish. It's important not to strike at those fish. When a good-sized blackfish picks up your bait, you'll either feel a sharp tug, or sometimes the line will just go slack as the fish picks up your jig off the bottom. That's the time to set the hook. And immediately try to pull the fish away from the structure before it hangs you up. In this location, I usually use 4 feet of 50 pound fluorocarbon for a liter. Here I'm only using 30 pound test, so that if I get snagged I won't lose the camera. I did bend the barb down on the hook, figuring that if I hooked any good sized blackfish I probably didn't have a chance of landing them. In about 20 minutes of shooting I did hook 3 nice sized blackfish, they all broke the line. Here comes a large porgy checking out the bait. 
I shot this in the second week of November, so this fish is a real straggler. Is it me or are those toadfish a lot cuter under the water? The blackfish were really biting aggressively on this day. Watch the way this blackfish chases the bait up on top of the rock and grabs it. It was a pretty decent fish. Certainly had no trouble breaking off. Now coming up, you're going to see all the little fish suddenly scatter. A really nice blackfish, I'd estimate 6 to 8 pounds picks up the bait and immediately dives under a rock. When I try to set the hook, the line rubs against the rock and parts instantly. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.